And I think we're live. What up? We're live. Hey. Hello, Internet. Oh. Ooh, minor glitch. Well, we're definitely live now. <laughs> no turning alive. back. We're live. We're li we are a live. <laughs> we are a live at One Month Studios, and uh, and today we are doing a Q and A about video. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so basically, we have some questions from you, and hopefully, we have some answers for you. Uh, I am working on the one month video course, and by day, I run the studio here, uh, at which we are in right now. Um, and uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about equipment, a little bit about sort of, you know, planning, strategy, and just the whole, you know, whole workflow of how to bring a video from an idea in your head to the to internet. To So yeah. To reality. Cool. Pull up some questions. Oh, Please. this is uh, Sydney. Hi, um, I'm Sydney. She is an amazing producer here at One Month, and we work together to make all the videos. If you've taken our courses and are a student, uh, you might be familiar with some of her work if you wanted to wear of her herself. Behind the scenes. Yes. Just the, the woman behind the curtain. Um, <laughs> cool, so I reached out to a bunch of you, the viewers, the students, and asked for your input about what you'd like to see in a one month video course. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten some great uh, questions recently about how to make great promo videos and, and cool ways to demo your product and how to look great on camera. Um, but we wanted to focus in today on some specific questions. Um, and Zach can speak to uh, a lot of these different things because he's a pro. And we want to talk about uh, you know, getting clear about what you want to create, so important. Um, how to think of, think of your videos in terms of strategy, developing a great strategy for your budgeting and what you want to do. And, um, and also, we, you ha we had some great questions about how we make our videos here at one month, which is sort of, that could be like a three hour webinar, yeah, really that diving into be. that, but we'll try we're gonna to. We're going to touch some of the, the basics and some of the things that I think are more exciting and maybe less obvious about how we make videos here. We had a lot of interest in that. And uh, yeah, I think uh, one of the questions was uh, about, you know, how to, hire somebody to make a video? Um, you know, how do you work with a freelancer to make a video? And, you know, uh, it's funny. I, I like to share a story about um, a potential freelance gig that I actually turned down, um, where a startup came to me and they wanted to make, uh, they had a, a $10,000 budget. And it was the, the only budget they had for media. They could only make one video. Or that's what they were sort of aiming to do. Um, they wanted to be four minutes and to hit four topics, something that they could show to investors, that they could show to uh, consumer clients, to some of their business partners. They were you know, looking to create a business that needed prof a professional network in to offer services. So they were sort of a marketplace. Um, and last but not least, they also wanted like a, a technical tutorial to show both sides of you know, the users how to use their, their application. It sounds like they really wanted five videos and That's not one. <laughs> exactly what I told them was, look, you know, I would be happy to take your money. <laughs> um, and you do not want to hire me or really anyone else at this point. And I put them on to ScreenFlow and the Blue Yeti, which is a $100 microphone, and recommended that they basically experiment with Keynote uh, or PowerPoint or, you know, whatever, like, slide software they could get their hands on, even Google Docs use ScreenFlow to record their screen with a PowerPoint presentation and use their Blue Yeti microphone or really any simple USB microphone. You could use what's on the computer, but you know, to get a little bit extra quality and to actually just create simple, low cost videos that they're scripting themselves and using them on a platform like Wistia or YouTube where they can look at the analytics and you know, see if it's producing the results they want. And I think that that's like, if you take anything away from this webinar, the biggest thing that I recommend people thinking about make video, thinking about making videos, is to think about what you're trying to produce with that video. What results are you investing in by spending your time and your money 
making a video. Because you may find by looking at that, that you're not really, maybe you shouldn't make a video. Maybe you should write a blog post. Maybe right. you should, you know, like uh, yeah. run a Google ad campaign. It really depends on right, what you're trying to exactly what you're trying to accomplish. And so uh, I'm going to bring you to uh, to the desk cam. So this is, uh, this is me showing off. I'm going to show you later on in the webinar how we uh, are using uh, DSLR cameras as our webcam and creating a multi-cam webinar. Uh, but in the meantime, showing off. This is fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so cool. Just oh, sorry, bump the mic there. Um, so you can see, this is the desk that we're These sitting are at. Our hands. Um, and anyway, so <laughs> focusing in. Sorry, I uh, <laughs> I have ADD. I'm allowed. Um, okay. <laughs> so you know, really, you're trying to produce a result. I can spell, maybe. Um, try to produce a result. And maybe a video is the way to get there. Um, how you get there with video is what is called, uh, I can put that thing over there, a call to action. And you web developers and designers will be familiar with those buttons on your sites that you know are designed to, you know, with copy, drive a user interaction, like a click, a share, whatever it might be. Um, so you need a call to action to get to a result typically. Um, and so you can start to think you know, around this, like who is your audience that you want to take an action? So it's like audience, to, and then you know this is really where the content comes in. Wow, my handwriting is getting <laughs> worse and worse. I'll Whoa, try to that's impressive. step that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressively bad. <laughs> um, so you know, I think the you start to as you break it down into components, see that there's some there's some questions that you want to answer before you break out your checkbook and go to hire your, you know, your local right. filmmaker, even buy a camera. Right, buy that like high, the highest price camera you can find or the exactly. one you saw, you read one blog post <laughs> and it told you to buy that one camera for like Seriously. 60 grand. And, you're like, and it's amazing, you know, like technology these days is incredibly uh, affordable. Like you can get, I, I love the GH4 is probably my favorite oh, yeah. camera. It's what we use here at one month. Uh, the Canon 70D is really popular with YouTubers. Um, you know, personally, I use the uh, the Sony RX, you know, uh, 100 Mark IV, and there there are a lot of new gizmos out there. But the fact of the matter is, if you're a startup or you're trying to start a business, I imagine you probably don't have a lot of money to waste or a lot of time to spend learning new things. Which is why right. I strongly recommend just like you know, our first courses were shot on webcams like on Matan's webcam and True. with ScreenFlow, which is a $99 app that lets you just record what's on your screen so you can use slides or whatever. And it's quick, it's dirty, and it's all you need to really like just get started. Um, so easy to use. It's so easy to edit on ScreenFlow. I feel like I've kind of covered a lot and I'm like a little bit, is there another question or do you have any follow-up oh, sure. questions? Oh, um, sure. So we talked about getting clear about what you want to create. Uh -huh. Um, and developing a strategy. Um, let's talk more about how we make videos here at One Month. Sure. And sort of like you sort of touched upon the history of where we started, and I think it'd be cool to tell them about where we're at. I would love to. So I'm going to take us back to the desk and zoom out a little first. So, um, all righty, clean up our mess. <laughs> so um, we use the GH4 camera. <laughs> GH4 cameras. Um, we actually use Panasonic lenses, but I have both of those zoom lenses on the cameras we're using right now. Um, so I can't demo that. But what we've, a product that I found early on when we we're building the studio is this Eno Jenny HDMI USB 3. This is overkill.com um, for most startups. Um, I think because our core business is making videos for the web and we want them to look particularly good, uh, which 
I, you know, I think one of the expectations that I think a lot of viewers have these days for really crisp, beautiful videos is a look that became popular as HDSLRs, uh, like the Panasonic GH4 and the Canon Mark uh, 5D Mark III now is very popular, the 7D as a slightly less expensive version. Um, they, they made possible a shallow depth of field look where you'll notice the bookshelf behind us is kind of fuzzy and soft while our faces are really clear. And if I refocus the camera, you'll notice if we focus on the shelf, mm -hmm. all of a sudden we're kind of fuzzy and weird. And that's something that, uh, you know, back, well, <laughs> back when, uh, you know, I don't know, I know for my family we had like one of those old school DV tape, oh, yeah. you know, like home video and, cameras. Yeah. And it was with those, you'd notice that everything was in focus and it mm -hmm. kind of looked flat. And that was a look that once these new cameras came out, you could kind of get away from and get more of that like cinematic mm -hmm. look that you'd see in the movies. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so how we make videos at one month is we use uh, the Panasonic GH4 with a interface device in the bottom so it can take in a uh, professional microphone. Um, let me see if I have one lying around. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we, we use, uh, I'm going to put all the product links uh, below so you can check it out um, in the description when uh, when we're through. So if you're watching this asynchronously, you should be good to go. Um, and uh, yeah, we use ScreenFlow. Uh, there are a couple videos when we're doing the desk shots uh, and recording teachers drawing things out on the table. Uh, in that instance, we'll record to card and edit in Premiere, uh, which is an Adobe app that comes with their Creative Cloud. And I prefer that to the new Final Cut X, uh, just because Final Cut X, a lot of filmmakers hate it because it took a big step away from what people were used mm. to with Final Cut 7, um, with like the magnetic timeline. And, and I think people felt like it was iMovie 9, like it was like iMovie Pro, like mm -hmm. it kind of dumbed down the software. They've added a lot of that Pro functionality back since launching a kind of embarrassing Pro app. It's, it's a lot better now. And there are some things that they've reimagined that I think are superior to anything else out there. But there are some behavioral things where you'll delete something and there are things kind of attached to it on the timeline. Oh, yeah. There's just some weird stuff that you don't want to deal with in the zero hour on a project where right. you're like really focused in on hitting a deadline. And that's why I recommend Premiere Pro on top of the fact that it integrates with all the other Adobe apps and we use Photoshop a lot for design elements. Yeah. So it's nice to have that sort of seamless interaction. Yeah, not yeah, that keep, you keep it in the fam. Yeah, is that uh, so you, you feel like a lot of people jump ship from uh, from uh, Final Cut? Absolutely. Into Premiere. Do you think that Premiere so. is the like the optimal like that's the wave of, of editing future? It depends who you ask. And you know, I'm I would say yes, but that's me. Um, to a certain extent, Apple may get their s together and people <laughs> may flock to that eventually. I, I don't think it's going to happen. But I know a lot of people use it and love it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of people in Hollywood would tell you that Avid is where it's at. Mm. I've used a little bit and it's it's the incumbent. It's mm -hmm. the, you know, the Windows, you know, 2000 to uh, yeah, Vista, whatever. Yeah. It, it, it's the Windows in the editing world. Like it's, it's very much entrenched out in Hollywood. But you're seeing a lot of stuff like Deadpool was edited completely on Premiere Pro. Oh. Um, which is kind of cool. That yeah, was a that fun is movie. cool. You should check it out. I it haven't seen it, but oh I keep, you guys keep talking You would about love it. it. Yeah. yeah, it's great. I just I love superhero movies for <laughs> yeah. some reason. I'm not like a big They're fun. There's a reason they. Know. There's a reason they yeah. work. Okay. <laughs> That's where the money goes. Yeah, for sure. Um, any cool. other? Yeah, we've got some other questions? good questions. Um, I don't want to see if anybody's in the chat. We don't have any uh, anything in the chat yet. But okay. <laughs> I've been checking it. Um, cool. Don't be shy. <laughs> Yeah, don't be shy, please. And definitely Jump leave in. questions in the comments if you're watching this after Absolutely. the fact. Uh, the chat box won't populate to the comments, at least in my experience doing webinars on YouTube, uh, which is cool. If you have a question, you know, even if you're not sure if it's answered, just we'll, we'll get to you. 
So here's here's a question from um, a one month student, and I'm, this has definitely been super topical. And I know that yeah. you've been speaking about this. You know, you've written a blog post about it, and you've spoken sure. about it in um, in our startup course about looking great on camera. And sure. someone said, <laughs> "I want to be able to look more professional, <laughs> professional, professionable." So yeah, I, I want like, to look. I want to be able I like to look, look professional. <laughs> I like to be. Impressionable. Um, I want to be able to look more professional, mm -hmm. credible, and presentable in video, and know how to act, where to look, uh, how to say certain things, and when voice, pitch, etc. And you are the perfect so person good. to speak. This is a lot of things, but this is you're the perfect person to speak on this because he's a professional voiceover actor. Yeah. In addition to many other things, <laughs> I wear a lot of hats. Um, so the funny thing, so what I love about this question is, you know. It kind of captures some of the the complexity of it. You know, how do you look professional and credible? Well, and presentable. The problem with trying to look professional and presentable is that by you know, say you suit up and you know, slick back your hair and look real fancy. You know, let's say you prepare yourself like you would be going into a corporate board meeting. Right. You may not be credible depending on who your audience is. Yeah. I know that if I came in in, in you know. Uh, Five thousand dollar suit, you know. The one month students may not take me seriously because it's kind of stodgy for our audience, um, and so that you know, it's something that you yeah. really have to get a bead on. And I think the best person to ask is yourself. Who would you want to listen to? You know, or right. if you have an audience that's remarkably different from you, one I would rethink why, or just make check in with yourself. Why are they your audience if you can't relate to them? And you know, and if you can, then really think about like what would I, who would I want to listen to? What would they be wearing? What would they be saying? How would they be talking? And from that, I would go into you know practice mode. I am a huge proponent of, and this is something that I learned the hard way with voiceover. The best way to get good on tape, whether it's audio, video, whatever, is to be on it. <laughs> And just watch yourself. And I, it's kind of awkward at first. I, your voice I promise so you. Weird. Yeah. yeah, it's really unsettling to hear your own voice on camera. Yeah, and there is a tipping point. I promise that, you know, and maybe this speaks to my narcissism, but like I've listened to myself on t on voice enough that I know exactly what I sound like. And and that's that wasn't how it started. And I think a lot of people, you know, I feel like that's a thing. Like you know, you talk about like oh, like I sound totally different on you know, on recording on camera. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yes, until you learn what you sound like and then you know. And right. you, it's it's a process of calibration. Um, the other thing, you know, it's like uh, I, whatever you make of his movies, um, I got to sit in a Q&A with uh, 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 Michael Bay and, you know, love or hate his movies, they sell well. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons they do, I would assert, is that he actually runs test audiences. He sits people down like a researcher and, you know, they have a camera on the people watching the movie and watch how they react to oh, it. Oh, interesting. And they re-edit things that don't work, that don't have people leaning hmm. in in whatever way they're trying to get a reaction. That is so cool. And that, you know, it sort of loops back to what we were talking about earlier where, where it's like you want to get what result are you trying to produce with video? and you know, obviously, platforms make a big difference. Like the ability to link out of YouTube to a buy page is awesome, you know, in terms of being able to think about what results you're trying to produce. Because you can actually create inbound traffic to your website if you're trying to do that. Um, you know, like if you're trying to get people to watch more of your channel and subscribe to your channel, that's also something that you can do by linking to other videos that you've made or putting a subscribe button. Um, and so you can start to think about, you know, clicks. Uh, right. But maybe you just want somebody to think about something and tell their friends. That's harder to measure, but it's definitely something that, you know, is a reason to make a video. Um, that's a little bit more traditional media to an extent. Um, then I, I think personally there's a capability online to make a really deep intimate connection and get real immediate actions from people um, and with people through you know comments um, which seriously if you've got questions comment yeah, um, please, we're you, looking. Know, you can like 
like look at who likes and doesn't like your videos. Um, and this it is just kind YouTube. Of addicting. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, it really does. He's Especially exper he's been experimenting <laughs> on the one month. YouTube channel. I have, and I've also on my uh, my personal channel, which mm -hmm. you can definitely check out. Uh, I'll put a card right there, um, and uh, or maybe it's there. Uh, I forget. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So I guess to to just loop back to the question of you know how do you look more professional, credible, presentable, and you know I, I would just say practice, 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 and inside the context of knowing intimately who you're talking to. Right. And that could be watching it back yourself and being your own judge or getting a, a panel of friends yeah. or, you know, <clears throat> test viewers Absolutely. to check out your stuff. And if you're if you're starting a startup that teaches things online, you know, like who are your who are you teaching to? Get a whole lot of them. Get all their feedback and take it graciously and pay attention. And yeah. To a degree, be yourself because if you're trying really hard to be that guy in the, you know, three thousand dollars suit and yeah. that's and you're a hoodie person, then you're going to be uncomfortable and they're going to see you yeah. like, you know, itching because it's your suit's too shiny. Same page. Slippery. Back on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's like you know, I, uh, what's funny is like, because I feel like there are a couple different routes with video. You're either making uh, a piece or a uh, you know, a playlist to a certain extent. Like there, I feel like, you know, there is a case, Wisty is a wonderful platform that we use oh, yeah. to host our course content and also our marketing videos where we're able to capture email in the video so through cool. the player, so which cool. is incredible. You can just drop it in the way you would add uh, annotations in a, a YouTube video. And it's really valuable for marketing. And those are more one-off videos. Those are things that we send out into the ether and we don't want anybody to look at other videos around it necessarily. We're, we're really focused on squeezing the viewer into one outcome, which is giving us their email and maybe even signing up for the course. Whereas then there's the channel model, which is YouTube and what I love about YouTube, where you're really offering somebody a buffet and they can take what they like and leave what they don't like and it it gives the viewer a little bit more freedom and room to breathe and I think has lower expectations of quality mm -hmm. so I think you know one thing you can do to like look one thing you should maybe avoid in trying to look professional is trying to look too professional mm -hmm. um, I am one of the strongest proponents I, I am a big fan of Casey Neistat I watch his channel she'll tell you um, and uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and one of the things I learned from watching his videos, which were incredible, I'll put his channel in the notes below, um, is people don't come to YouTube for content. Some people do, but for the most part, at least the people who subscribe, they're here for relationships. Right. And that's so important because yeah. If somebody was like a brick wall, like this, like yes, put together just, little, just, like, and, and yeah. also acting stiff, yeah, exactly. stiffly, just sort of like, this is how you're professional. People have a really attuned bullshit meter on the yep. internet. And, you know, it's, it's really refreshing to meet people who are genuine and yeah. fun. And I don't think you're going to get that by buttoning it down. Now, if you are representing a UN campaign to end something atrocious in the world, you should probably present yourself a little bit more, right. you know, professionally and like yeah. dress it up and you can be vulnerable and, you know, authentic inside of that and find your authentic self-expression without sort of feeling fake, I think right. is the thing that you want to, I think that's Avoid. such a good word, authentic, for, for this person who asked about how do you seem credible. You know, they'll see that, and especially if you have tons of content out there and you're just putting it out there and being yourself. Yeah. I definitely recommend, like, if you have a clear idea of what you want to make, see what other people are making in that right. space. I, I bet 90% of the time you're not going to be the first person to the space with video. And that's a good thing because you can see what's out there and you can see what the bar is. And it's usually, at least for the time being, kind of low. So sky's the limit. Good luck. Um, actually, there was one more that I think that you could talk about. Oh, so voice sort of, and pitch. Well, we talked, well, that, per, well, that person, sure. yeah. about. Yeah, I can give a little bit more specific. How they can work on that. The big thing is variety. Vocal variety is key. Um, I think... 
a lot of online tutorials tend to fall into the stagnant flatline camp wah, wah. where it's just like, and today we're going to do the tutorial on the thing that's very exciting. I promise it's so very brutal. exciting. You're ready for how exciting this excitingness is going to be. And it's just, so, oh my God, it just like, it kills. And you watch it anyway because yeah. it's the best you, one. But yeah, for exactly. whatever reason, it's the most viewed. Because you, know? <laughs> you got to get through it. And, mm -hmm. you know, like that's where you can really stand out. And this is a great place where if you need to be more professional for whatever it is you're making and, and can't swear and can't, you know, if you need to be a little bit more buttoned down, that's totally fine. You can get personality across in how you talk. And that can be in, you know, the speed of how you're talking and slowing it down, maybe to make an emphatic point, the volume, where, you know, if you really want someone's attention, you may think to get louder is better, but actually getting quieter pulls people in. Mm -hmm. And then if you get loud, yeah, because people have to kind of lean in to listen. And so, you know, it's one of those things where you can <laughs> begin to sort of study what's out there and see what works on you. Um, right. You know, that was my favorite part in, I went to film school and, and uh, Janine Basinger, who is just a brilliant film scholar, taught us how to use ourselves as test subjects. Like we are our own lab rats. Hmm. And when you watch something, you can watch through the lens of, you know, sort of stepping back and watching yourself watch you can notice like what makes you laugh? What makes you pay attention? What turns you off? So you film yourself watching something? Well, you could, why not? You know, and like see it back. Well, you definitely could do that. I, I mean, it might feel Michael weird, but you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you can at least just like with the mindfulness of your own body, right. just like notice like what makes you laugh? What makes you click out of a video? Mm -hmm. Statistically, there's a huge drop off after the first five seconds of a video. And so, you know, on the one hand, as a creator, you want to think, how are you going to grab somebody's attention in those first five seconds? On the other hand, as a viewer, you can notice what makes you tune out. That's so good. Um, let's check out some more questions. <laughs> and for those of you still with us, I appreciate <laughs> you being with the all over the place nature. Uh, I have a note from my doctor. I have ADD. <laughs> Um, let's see. This person wants to create high quality stuff. Yeah. It looks like some of the people that wrote in actually had pretty large budgets for their, oh, for their equipment. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think that, you know, we come from like a scrappier mentality of like how to make, how to make a promo video on an iPhone. Totally. Um, which is to me personally interesting. Um, but if you had like a $1,000 budget, let's say. For sure, that's such um, a great question. For making video, let's say, let's say for the sake of it, like um, I was starting a business and I mm -hmm. wanted to make like online tutorials. Yeah. Um, and I had $1,000, where would you, off the top of your head, recommend some of that money get allocated? Absolutely. So, you know, it depends what kind of video you're making, but let's say you're trying to make a talking head video, which is looks a lot like this, where you're just in a room with one or two people and it's a sort of close crop, not a full body, um, and you need it to look really high quality, which mm -hmm. you can define as high def or higher, say, you know, 1080p to 4K, which is just the resolution size and the screen that it will look cr crisp on. Um, and you want that look where it's really nice and in focus in front and really soft right. and <laughs> fuzzy in back. Um, I would take that $1,000 and go get a used Panasonic GH2 or 3 or a Canon T2 whatever Rebel that's 1080p and shoots at least you know, 24 frames per second. Um, and... Uh, and a lens that is, it would be nice if you could get something that's like 1.8 or faster. And faster means like a lower number in the f-stop, which, let me see if I can demo this. Do, do, do. But anyway, the, the point is uh, you want a fast lens because that's going to let you, um, uh, what is it? This is like super fast. This one's 0. 0.95. I don't know if you can read that. Yeah, that's that's just gonna be oh, that's not gonna work. We have a question. 
Oh, cool. After we're done, we'll take our question from our viewer. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Thanks, Kay Clark. That's super exciting. Um, so um, what did I want to say? So yeah, I would get a, a, a used uh, DSLR with a fast lens, and you can get those for like thirty bucks on oh, really? on eBay and That's with so adapters. Cheap. It's ridiculous. How is that even possible? Because actually? old photo lenses are, you know, just they they've come down a lot, and they're, you know, like I know I inherited a bunch of lenses from my grandpa, and oh. and that was after I bought my first one or two for like thirty bucks with mm -hmm. like a sixty dollar adapter. So you can get a great lens for under a hundred bucks. Awesome. Uh, I recommend the. Rode Video Mic Pro, um, which is like 230, 230 bucks. Again, I'm going to put all these products just down in the description so you don't have to look around. Um, and uh, and then if any tripod is going to work. I like the Gorilla Pods for flexibility. They're these oh, like, yeah. little oh, leggy so things. Great. I don't know if we have. I can get one. That'd be great. Um, there's these little grippy things that can you know turn anything into a tripod. But seriously, you could use a flipping like. Uh, ladder and just put the camera on the ladder. I know I've done that. I've taped iPhones to ladders before for tripods. Like you don't have to get the $800 thing. Um, this is a gorilla pod. Um, these run like, I think this one in particular is like 120 something. This is like They're the so beefy useful. one. Oh my God. You and they make throw... lighter ones for iPhones and, yeah. and smaller cameras. Um, and you could put others, you could put lighting, you could put like a small yeah. light on that, you could you and can, just really put anything anywhere. <laughs> they're really awesome and they work as selfie sticks too, which is yep. fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think, and then I would spend the rest of the money on uh, lighting. Um, and that could look like, you know, uh, there are a bunch of soft boxes that use CFL bulbs, the those like compact yeah. fluorescents. Um, if you can afford it, LED is really nice. Uh, I really like, and we use at one month, the uh, Diva KinoFlow product, which is totally outside of that budget. Um, but they're like, they make things like Cool Lights as a brand that's sort of a knockoff of it that's just as good. And you can, it's just as good to the extent that you can use the same bulbs. They're just cheaper fixtures, I think it's called, the things that house the bulbs. Mm. Um, and I think you can get a three-point kit for like 500 bucks. Um, so that's a that's one way to spend $1,000. Um, another way to think about, you know, a $1,000 budget could be if you're going to be doing a lot of moving shots. Um, ooh, I'm going to go grab this thing. He's gone. He's on the move. Right up there. Um, if you're going to be moving around oh, yeah. a lot and like, let's say you want to get like a promo video of somebody walking through your like local park or street or whatever, nah, I'm, I'm not going to hook all of it up. <laughs> um, and you want to, you know, get an interview with somebody like running around, um, you could spend a thousand dollars by getting this Osmo deal for like six fifty, maybe 700. Um, it's 4k. So it's really high quality. And it's super smooth video. So this is a camera, and it's on this little like robot thing, um, and it takes incredible quality. It's going to get a lot higher quality outside in daylight because it needs a lot of light, um, and it gets really grainy when you're shooting inside, like a Gro GoPro would or an iPhone. Um, and uh, and then you can get a eighty dollar to two hundred dollar, depending on what your budget is. Um, from either Rode or Sennheiser, a little lav mic that plugs into an iPhone. So you can okay. put the iPhone in your pocket, clip a microphone. A lav mic's a lavalier mic that clips onto clothing. You'll see speakers use it a lot. And that way you can have one person filming your subject and the subject have a mic right on their body so you don't need to run. Yeah. You know, that's the problem with the, the uh, video, the uh, Rode Video Mic Pro is it's great indoors in quiet environments to get a really high quality sound. But once you get outside, it can get a little tricky when there's especially lots yeah. of street noise. Yeah. So that's why I would recommend a lav mic for anything outdoors. Uh, and again, this is mostly for promotional videos, not for narrative or you know right. advertising videos right. or you know, like narrative ads. Anyway. So we have a question from a viewer, uh, Kate Thanks, Clark. Thanks, Clark. <laughs> um, 
What's your input on using a GoPro for starters? Yeah, so I've had some really great experience. So GoPros are an interesting beast. They are an incredible product. Those guys killed it and they're incredible cameras. I returned mine because it wasn't yeah. what I needed personally. Um, it. So the thing about it is it's an action cam. So it has a really wide field of view, which can look a little bug-eyed depending yeah. on what you're doing. What's cool about the GoPros, especially some of the higher end ones like the, uh, the four black is that, well, all of them can take a narrower image. Um, the problem is it can reduce the resolution, I think. At least it looked that way from what I was hmm. working with. Um, and so you can get it down to that narrow field or narrower field of view, and it looks good. Um, I'm actually not sure if it reduces the, the resolution. Now that I think about it, I don't think it does. Um, so yeah, so that's the first thing that I would do. Um, if you have a GoPro and you want to start making videos, here's the thing. No matter what I say, the best camera for you is the one you already have. Uh, like in terms of just getting started, like uh, there is no reason why you can't build a business or start building a business on your iPhone. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I really didn't respect until I started making videos on YouTube and stressing out over, you know, do I have a good enough camera? Do right. I need, do I need to rent a rent? And it's just like, no way, dude. Like <laughs> use what you've got, make something awesome and learn what you want to make because that's going to change what is best for you so yeah so with your gopro i would put it down to the medium or narrow field of view so that you don't get that optical distortion unless you're jumping out of heli helicopters or hel yeah. heliplanes heliplanes <laughs> um and uh yeah and then the other thing with gopros is sound the onboard sound in gopros really bothers me partially because I come from the voiceover world um, and so audio is something I have a really keen ear for and, it, and, and poor quality audio really bugs me. If I'm not mistaken, at least the GoPro that I had for a week um, had a uh, port for a microphone so you could like plug a mm. microphone in. I think um, I'm going to just double check that. Um, cause I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but, uh, but yeah, if that's the case, then I would recommend again, getting that lav mic from either Rode or Sennheiser that you can plug into your iPhone. And then when you pull all the files into your computer, you can sync them up and mute the audio from the camera. Yeah. So then it just sounds really crisp and, and sounds as good as it looks. That's great. Um, anything else with, so then the other thing with. The problem with uh, GoPros and really any low, any single solution camera, even point and shoots, mm -hmm. you know, unless you're getting one with a really fast lens, like the uh, the Sony RX100 Mark IV or the Canon G7X, which are both 1.8 f-stop, which is pretty fast and good in low light. Problem is, it it then digitally makes itself brighter. Um, so it's, which is, it's just tricky, you know, um, to get a high quality image as it bumps up the ISO, it lowers the resolution. Like it, it, right. it gets grainy, um, and doesn't look as pretty. So you want to make sure you flood the scene with light, whether that's daylight. So shooting outside is good, but then you run into problems with moving sunlight and, you know, that's right. something to deal with. Um, or if you can, you know, afford to get lights studio lights in your apartment. Um, you know, that's, that's something that I would definitely make sure you have is good lighting. Super important. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some great lighting tutorials online. I took one on Linda. I totally. mean, there's like, it doesn't, there are places you can go to. And I think that that's something that you'll probably tackle in your yeah, video course. I'm definitely but... going to be doing a, uh, a crash course on lighting and building an affordable lighting kit for under a right. hundred bucks. That's amazing. Um, I'm so as, cool. as much as possible, you know, you're going to be able to take the one month video course and make something for nothing. Um, I'm going to probably teach right now. I'm, I'm unless I hear a lot of other 
things that people want, probably going to teach ScreenFlow, which is what we use. Um, it's a $99 app, so I feel like it's suitable for pretty much anyone, and you mm -hmm. can use it without buying a license. It'll just not export final videos. You'll need to pay the $99 so that you don't get a watermark if you ultimately want to keep right. your video. Right. Um, but if I hear a lot from people in the comments below or, um, you know, we're going to be talking about this in a lot of different channels. So if I hear from people that they want to learn iMovie, then maybe we'll switch to that. Um, and same with same goes for Premiere, any of that other software. But I feel like the $50 a month price point for Premiere is prohibitive for some people. Right. And I definitely am not making a course about, you know, commercial filmmaking right. uh, or, you know, feature filmmaking. This is very much how to communicate your ideas effectively and affordably online, whether that's for promotional videos, learning videos, um, you know, it's going to be really appropriate for people who want to make videos for their homepage to advertise what they do and yep. communicate what it is they do and people who want to build YouTube channels and things like that. That's amazing. I think that it's our students, from what I've heard, are very interested in, in all those things. So. I'm so excited to teach it. So yeah. it should be fun. I'm excited to have you teach it. Hell yeah. Let's see what happens. Awesome. Is that, uh, is I that think wrapping that, up? I think that, that largely wraps it up. OK. Yeah. Amazing. Well, it's been super fun to talk to you guys and answer your questions. and. I look forward to doing this again soon. Me too. Uh, stay tuned. Definitely subscribe. Ooh. Oh my God! I got it for this. The newest, uh, <laughs> the newest mascot at the one month office. Oh man, is it even in the room? Oh yeah. <laughs> Boom. Oh yeah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Yay! <What? laughs> All right. Have a good. Rest of your day.